Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me once again. So today we're going to go over how to add sound fonts and blade styles to the Asteria board. It's a video I haven't came across too much on YouTube. In fact, uh, it was one of the things that really hindered my learning process in terms of figuring out how to do stuff with the Asteria board. There are some videos on YouTube. Personally, I found them very vague and not as in-depth. Um, a couple of them were, that's not to kind of take away from anyone else's kind of efforts or anyone else's content. Um, I just personally felt that it was very difficult to follow whatever videos I found on the Asteria board itself. So like I said, today we're going to add uh, a sound font to the Asteria board. I'm going to go over not everything with the board, but I'm going to go over the, the basic fundamentals in terms of the layout of the, uh, the kind of file system, the uh, different blade effects and styles. Um, the kind of colour matrix, RGB setup, that kind of stuff as well. So we'll go over all that and then we'll come back and we'll test a few things out. So uh, without any further ado, let's dive over to the computer and uh, let's get to it. So what I've got here is I've got a copy of my master file for my Asteria SD card. This is not my master copy, I make copies. So my master copy is in here. I will leave that alone. I always make copies. I always like to have one copy that's untouched. You know, I just like to leave it the way it is, leave it alone, don't touch it. Therefore, I've always got a backup to fall back on if I make a mess of things. Um, so I would always say to people and recommend make copies of everything. So make a copy of your SD card and put it into a separate folder. Mine is called Lightsaber Master. In here, I keep everything from um, sound fonts to blade styles to my Xenopixel SD card backup, my Profi SD card backups, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's what I do and I make copies. So please, please be careful when messing around with any files on any Sabre, whether it's CFX or whether it's a Styria, Profi, whatever. Um, just protect yourself and make sure you've got a copy of everything that you keep hidden away. That way if you make a mistake, you're fine. You can default back and everything's sweet. You can start again. So I've got a copy here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over first and foremost the format of the Asteria board and then we'll dive into things like adding a sound font to the board and blade styles and all that kind of stuff because it's a little bit more complicated than uh, well, in my opinion, at least anyway, it's a little bit more complicated than Profi, to an extent. Um, but once you understand and once you see it done, it'll make complete sense. So this is a copy of my SD card as it came, apart from a couple things. So the likes of the TG, OIFT and BG, these are all in um, a zip folder in here under Blade Effects. These are all different Blade Effects. And I'll go into what these do in a little bit later on. So for anyone that may have a, a CFX board, you will probably notice it's similar in terms of you've got banks, so bank one through 12, which is how it comes as standard. Inside these banks, you have your different folders for your effects. So blaster, class, drag, hum, HY swing, this is hybrid swing, um, but I can you can utilize it in a slightly different way, which I'll show you again later on. In, which is your uh, power off, lock up. Out, which is your power on. Simple LED, um, I don't really bother with this, to be honest with you. Um, I'll be honest, I don't, I don't even know what this is. This could be for the LEDs on the, uh, on the NeoPixel connector, but I haven't even, messed around with it and there's nothing in the manual for it either so that's great um stab you've got all your stab effects obviously swing bank switch so that's your font selection um file so that it gets renamed bank switch rather than font and then effect if you open this up these are your settings for um for the font so swing out, stab out, all that kind of stuff. You can change all these. So if you wanted stab out activated, change the zero to a one. And then you would just, uh, there we go. And then you would just save. And that's it saved. You go back into it, stab out as it's there. So I like to have swing out and stab out 
on. If you want to turn them off, you just switch the one to a zero and that turns it off. So a little bit in terms of how this is all structured. Um, and I'll try and be as clear as I possibly can on this. So within every single one of these folders, within most of these folders, you have not just your sound files for that particular effect, but you also have these ones here. So you've got this file here, 2.tg. And you'll be thinking, what the hell is 2.tg? What the hell is this? I'm going to take you back out of this and I'm going to take you to the manual. This is as a very, very, very well written manual. I have to admit, I was pleasantly surprised at exactly how well this manual was written. It is 21 pages long, however, please read it. It is time consuming, I know, but please read it because everything is pretty much in here. Everything you can refer to back to this manual is here. But what I want to focus on just now is blade configuration. BG modes. FT modes, TG modes, OI modes, NP color flip. So what these all are is these are your blade effects for specific things. So the best way to explain it, and the best way is to actually show you. So again, I'll go to bank one, blaster, 2.TG. So we'll go down to TG modes, and that is a part flip part of the main colour, MC, main colour, will change to another one depending on the flip colour. Adjust time, flip count, length, colour drift, blah blah blah, down and up range. So what this does is this creates a blaster effect on the blade. If we look at the Clash, we have 4.TG and that is a spread. So a segment will spread on the blade, adjust the spread mode, length, speed, start point, colour drift, etc. So you can go into this and you can actually change the settings as well. I'm not going to do that. The purpose of this video is to show everyone how to basically add fonts that you want on your Asteria Saber uh, and how to add the uh, blade styles for that. When we go to the likes of the ignition out, you've got 3.oi. So the OI mode 3 is Comet, they call it Comet, a bright block in front of the Comet Base, uh, uh, sorry, like a comet that leads to the scrolling of the blade. Basically, that's an on spark. It's essentially an on spark that runs up the the uh, the front of the blade. Um, so they they call it comet. You can change that to have pulse. You have fragmented blocks, increasing or decreasing in frequency or fade. So you have all these styles that you can do. Or add to that stab is three dot tg. So tg. Again, comet, a block will run up and down the blade. Um, but some of these are modified. For example, drag is 2.tg and blaster is also 2.tg. The difference is the drag one is a modified version of the uh, TG part flip. It will make it appear at the tip of the blade. So whenever you're adding a font, make sure that you have an actual drag TG file or 2.tg file. Uh, otherwise, when you do your drag, it will appear midway up the blade and it will not look right. So this is one of the unique things with Asteria. All of the blade effects are located within the actual folders for what the Sabre is doing. So for example, when the Sabre is idling, idle hum, 1.bg, static. So that's just a solid blade. But you could, for example, switch it out and go for a flame. You can go for chaos, which is an unstable blade effect. It's like Kylo Ren-esque. You can go rainbow, um, and you can add these modes in for your hum. You can then do the same for the likes of the lockup, 1.tg, so from the TG files again, it's flip. And the uh, main colour will change to another one, so that means that the, the, the full blade will change colour to a different colour. What you can do if you want to again is you can just change it to a part flip, um, which I've done on a couple of mine. Um, it just makes it look a, a lot bit better to be honest with you. But again, we'll go through this when we actually go to add a, add a sound font, because we will add a sound font uh, in this video, um, 
so you have a visual representation of, of the process and what's involved. I just want to kind of go over some of the basic stuff at the moment just so you are starting to have an understanding of what uh, what's involved with the Asteria board. Now one thing that's very very unique um, is the colour matrix. So if we open up the colour matrix, it'll open it up in the uh, notepad here. Up the top you can see colour setting, MC is your main colour, SC your secondary colour and FC is your flash colour. This is the way it will come as standard. And you'll have uh, 14 presets, different blade colour presets which you can change. You can cycle through them on the uh, stereo board. And the good thing is about that is you can, for example, select a, a sound font. The blade might default to red because this one here is config 125500. It uses the RGB spectrum, so um, red, green, blue. So you can obviously make your different your own your own colours and combinations of colours with that. Two five five two five five two five five of course being white. Um and you can kind of mix different colours, different blades, and you can really do what you want with it. Um it is very, very flexible. But what you can do is you can, for example, say it's um an Ezra Bridger sound font that you have installed and you've got it installed and you ignite it and it lights up red and you're like oh darn how do i make that default light up green well you just cycle through your configs and um, by pressing the buttons on the saber um wait till it hits green and that's it it will lock itself in so the next time that you fire the saber up it will remember that you selected green as the last color fire it up and it's green which is fantastic what i have done as I've actually got another config here, which is uh, 17 configs, which are better in my opinion. One thing that you do get as well is this little tool. We call it the uh, Saber Palette tool. You can use this tool to configure your blade before you even upload it to your SD card, which I think, again, is fantastic. So let's have a little look at it. So MCSCFC, so you've got main color, you've got your secondary color and your flash color. So let's go for a, just a red blade. So I won't go right up to 255 because what, what happens is if you put everything up to 255, which is the maximum you can go on the RGB scale, it will set everything too bright. It will zap your battery. And uh, especially if you're doing a white blade because everyone loves Ahsoka just now. Um, it will it will eat your battery super quick and if you do clashes if they're also set to white you will not get any clashes or flashes um, if they're set to like orange or something then that's different but if it's white on white you won't see anything at all so I like to try and dial it back a little bit so I'm going to go 200 and that gives you a representation there my secondary colour um, to be honest, I just want a red blade, so I'm going to go 200 again. And my flash colour, I will do a maximum white. So 255, 255, 255, you see that's white there. So this gives you a representation visually of what you'll be doing with your saber before you actually get onto your SD card, which is which is great. Uh, if you want to go for like a, I don't know, like a green or something, you could go 200 on the, on the green. You could mix that up with maybe 150 on the blue and get a nice kind of cyan kind of colour. Um, so it's really handy to, especially because the colour matrix is in this format, it's in the RGB format. This is a cracking little tool to give you a visual representation of what the blade colour will look like before you actually load it onto your SD card, put it on your Sabre and just figure out that you don't like that colour. So before you add a sound font, you're going to want to go ahead and come into the blade effects zip and you're going to want to unpack these four just select them drag them onto your desktop and maybe then put them into a master folder which i have done here and um, just so you have access to different blade styles and again if you're not sure what I've, as to what these are refer back to the manual uh, blade configurations and it will tell you bg modes ft modes tg modes oi modes everything that you need to know. So we're going to add a sound font, one of my favourite sound fonts at the moment. A New Hope Training by Kyberphonic, Mr Kyber Daddy himself, big shout out to Jesse. Awesome guy, uh, super humble. 
and uh, just big daddy cool, big daddy cool. So I'm going to take bank 12. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it on my desktop. And close this down. And I'm going to rename this straight away bank bank 13. You can name it bank 13 if you want to. Um, or you can just rename it a new hope training Asteria and have a separate Asteria folder and then just make a copy of that and rename it bank 13 and put it onto your SD card. That's what I have done to be honest. I have all my uh, uh, da -da 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 Asteria fonts here so far. Uh, I'm working through them. So what we're going to do is we've got that now our bank 13. We're going to open up a new hope training and we're going to want to use uh, I want V2 here. We'll do training. I like training one. So the training one is when Luke is on the Millennium Falcon with Obi Wan, and he has the the helmet on with the blast shield down. He has a training little kind of training ball, um, iconic scene, and uh, Jesse has done a fantastic job with the sound font. It really feels like you are pretty much in the movie. Um, in fact, if you were to go to Galaxy's Edge and ride Smuggler's Run. If you were in the waiting area and you had that sound font, that would be friggin' awesome. Um, but what you're going to want to do is for this board, obviously we've got our Verso, our Profi, and our CFX folders. You're going to want to use the CFX one. The Profi one will work as well, um, as will the Verso one, I believe, as well. Um, they, they will all work, but uh, the bottom line is, is the CFX one it is as close to the Asteria format as possible in terms of the way that they the files are named. You only have to really change a couple of file names um, for this to work. So this is why I always use the CFX font folders. So we'll open that up, put this one on the left, and we'll open up this one, put this on the on the right, and we're just gonna get straight into it. So we're gonna go blaster. And again, guys, please make sure you've made a backup before you do this. Please make a backup and make a copy of your backup and use the copy to do stuff with. Do not mess this up because I will not be held responsible for anyone that comments going, oh, I lost my sound fonts because I never made a backup. Well, that's too bad. Um, please make a backup. Please make a backup. So these ones here, Blaster, Blaster 2, 3, and 4, they are just going to go bye-bye. Um, we've actually got eight blaster sounds in this one, so we're just going to drag them straight across. All right, I can drag them straight across, or you can copy and paste them. I will drag them straight across because uh, I can always go back into my zip folder and and unpack another copy if I have to. So um, whatever works best best for you, you just uh, crack on and do that. Clash again, clash one through eight. We're just gonna delete those we've got 16 class sounds drag them across and again guys we've got these little uh, effects files in here if you want to change them and play around with them you know how to do it now I've shown you in the manual uh, the table of kind of what they are you unpack them put them into different files and see what they do have a blast it is relatively straightforward drag this one's called lockup but it doesn't have to be called lock up, it can be called drag. It doesn't need to be called lock up, just leave it named drag, it still works. Hum, it's just hum, so we're going to find our hum, which is usually hum M1, there we go. And rename that hum. HY swing, right, so this is where I want you to pay attention a little bit. We come right down here, we've got 16 swing files. And they are just named swing one through swing 16. All right, these are not the L swing or H swing files. It's these ones that you want here, the ones that are just named swing. So we're gonna get rid of these and we're gonna drag these ones into HY swing. Do not let the H throw you off because there is H ones here I'll explain in a little second when we get down to swing. All right. It makes no sense as to why they've done this. It should be the other way around, but it's not. So regular swing files into the hybrid swing folder. 
and then we will continue in a little second uh, down here, okay? Uh, in is your power off, so we'll find our power off. There's usually two. And then I'm just gonna name this power off two. Lovely, lock up, find a lock up. Out, so power on. So I'm gonna delete that, bring the power on over. We've got our power ons. Stab, uh, we've got four stab ones here. So we'll delete that one, and then we'll bring this one over. Stab one through four, perfect. Swing. So you've got SW01 underscore H, SW01 underscore L, and then you've got the same for all of this. These are pairings. So these apply to, and this is a good example because, because there's only two of each for this uh, sound font, which is perfect. So these two here and these two here need to be put into this same format here. So we're gonna delete these. I'm gonna get the L files, L swings. I'm gonna drag them over and I'm gonna rename this one. SW01 underscore L. Then rename this one SW02 underscore L. Gonna get our H swing files and bring them in and we're gonna do exactly the same except they're gonna be H at the end and not L. SW01 underscore H and SW02 underscore H. And what this does is this then creates pairings. So you've got 01 H and L and 02 H and L, your high and low swings. So that creates the pairings for the smooth swing. That's what this does. So this is incredibly important. If it's a smooth swing font that you're adding, this part here is incredibly important. This has to be formatted correctly. Otherwise, your saber is going to sound like absolute garbage. It will not sound good. Next thing we're going to do is our bank switch, which is our sound font. So we're going to delete bank switch. We're going to find font. We're going to bring this over and we're going to rename this bank switch. And that's it. We have just created our uh, a new Hope Training CFX to a stereo um, conversion. Uh, very, very simple. You only have to add, um, sorry, we'll have to rename a couple of files. It is very, very, very straightforward. If we go into our effect one here, I'm just going to turn the volume down. And if you own an Asteria board, you know it is far too loud when it comes stock from the factory. So I usually have the volume set to around about 10. I take it right down. Some people even take it down as far as 8. But I keep it around about 10. Save that. There we go. 10. Lovely jubbly. So what do we do now? We've got our lovely new sound font for our Asteria. Well, what we do is we get our SD card out. We pop it into our SD card reader. Into our PC, laptop, MacBook, whatever system you have. Uh, and we just basically drop it onto there. It will probably appear down here. Refresh it, boom, bank 13. That is it now added. Very, very straightforward guys, not difficult at all. Now what you see I've got down here is color matrix one and two. You can't have both of these on your card. In fact, this wouldn't even work. These are just uh, color matrix settings that I keep on my PC and I will drag them onto my SD card as and when I require them. Um, for example, if I was to want to use Color Matrix 2, I would drag that onto my SD card, but I would just rename it Color Matrix. I would take away the two, and it would just be Color Matrix. So uh, let's jump back off the computer just now. We'll fire up the Asteria, the Revan, and we'll see what we've done. And that's essentially it, folks. Uh, it's not very difficult. Need to change a couple of the uh, file names for a couple of the sound fonts, but. In terms of that, um, it's, it's not very difficult at all. Sound files for the likes of the, um, 
the, the kind of uh, underscore H, underscore L. Um, a little bit of getting used to, but once you can get used to that, and then obviously you've got the name change for the font selection as well. Um, so you just change that to bank switch and that's really it. So we'll get this baby fired up and uh, we'll see what we've done. I'll demonstrate a couple of things. I do have a full review coming from this very, very shortly now that I've figured out everything. Uh, it didn't take too long, a couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. I suggest you try it again, Luke. This time, let go of your conscious self and act on instinct. So you can see it's defaulted to a red blade. I was talking about this earlier on, we just corner and sweep, corner and switch. Change it up. So you really get that smooth swing. And that's why it's important to format those swing files the way we formatted them. Otherwise they will not sound good at all. Speaker's a little bit quieter as well. We changed the volume from 15 down to 10. So it's a little bit less, uh, Let's just say it won't blow your eardrums out now. Very, very loud when I first got the saber. Very, very loud. Let's try another one. This is Code Fulcrum. Another one from Kyber Daddy. Again, defaulted back to a red blade, but we can change that. And the white one is just around the corner for us. So this one has got a reactive swing on it, as you can maybe see. So the blade kind of goes unstable when you uh, when you swing it. And I've done this on purpose. This is what I mean when when you set everything to two five five for the white, and then you also have the flash color uh, as two five five for everything. You don't get anything on the blade. Nothing happens, so I would definitely recommend going uh, maybe orange or, or something for that. Or maybe just kind of going 200 for everything rather than 255. Um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. A lot of it is just trial and error. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you found the video to be helpful. Uh, I know that there's been quite a lot of... Uh, I wouldn't say confusion, but maybe a little bit of anxiety amongst people buying a stereo board. Um, they tend to prefer to go profi, and I can see why, to be honest, I would prefer to go profi as well. I just felt this time around, even though the profi was only maybe 30 or 40 pounds more, uh, I was really intrigued by this uh, stereo board, to be honest. I heard some good things about it, um, and at the moment, I'm, I'm not disappointed at the moment. I do have a full review coming very, very shortly, so keep your eyes uh, out for that one. But if you found this video helpful, please, please hit the like button, drop me a comment as well. Any questions that you guys have, please feel free to drop them below. I do endeavour to get back to every single one of you. Um, but the channel is reaching a point now where it is getting extremely busy. Um, I'm waking up in the morning, obviously the time difference between myself here in the UK and a lot of people that watch in the US, and kind of North America, Canada. Uh, as well, so I'm waking up in the morning and I've got comment after comment after comment, question after question after question. Uh, so I really am trying to get back to everyone.
One thing I would say is though is please, please, please watch the video all the way through first. It's very, very likely that the answer that you're looking for is in there. If it isn't, however, fair enough. Drop me a question, I will answer it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, just bear in mind though guys, there's a time difference here in the UK. Uh, some people get a little bit impatient from time to time, but uh, I think if you know me by now and you comment on my videos on a regular basis, you know that I'll always get back to you as soon as I can. So that's it for this one guys, uh, remember to subscribe, click the bell for notifications, like, leave your comments and uh, I'll see you in the next one, may the force be with you.